this is the removal of the stock Haldex controller on the rear of the unit, the rear differential. What size wrench are you using there, right? Uh, 3 8 with a 10 mil socket. Disconnect the harness at the top. Give me a new shot. Yeah. Right on. Go. Cool. Yeah, it's the. Uh, it's best having the hook to pop the clip. And it's trickier right now because it's hot. I'll try to show yeah. So just lifting the rear clip with the hook and then secondary. removing the boot. This is so that the harness can run up underneath the driver's side seat. The alternative would be to run it over the fuel tank to run it up underneath the back seat. Now connecting it to the two of the harness. So where the new harness sits is going to be on the side of the fuel tank because the bracket for the stock one, the new Hotex controller doesn't have a mounting point for it yet.
when pinning the connector just make sure that you follow the little diagram that we have yeah. in each of the pins you'll hear a positive click when it's fully seated yeah. and you can see when it's on. you'll see all three yeah. pins popping through and then you have this swedge that holds all the pins in place some of them are good. I, like, that is you also hear it, that, that positive click. That's how you know it's they locked in place. Probably charging the same price for the for the end link, but saving costs. No, no, make sure this is that link. Like the wire is facing this way, so it can give as much slack this way. You don't want it. If you have it like something product, if I can pull it out. If you have it like that, it's probably not gonna reach its location. Yep. So just gotta make sure it's going towards the driver's side. Yeah. And this is for the, the kick panel install location. It'll be short if it's not like that. And you just sit tight in. Run it along this way. When are we doing the big turbo on this, man? Motorville, big turbo? Yeah. Does it have to go for it? Oh goodness. Oh. I'm startled. When I have to put an epilepsy one in here now. Wonder if we can get sponsored by Mocha de Gorilla. <laughs> this hair brought to you by Mocha de Gorilla. The rocks. This Chilo Rock. We'd rather get sponsored by zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Used on every one of our projects. Ever. Brought to you in part by... As you can see, it's been completely tucked up in and out of the way. So you're not going to have any wire dragging. That's what you want. The tricky part is getting this one out. So this is a 12.10 mil clock. Yep. So what he's doing now is we're going to remove the stock valve. We're gonna loosen part. up. It's in part. Yeah. Oh. It needs to be a new part. Yep. We're gonna loosen up the drive shaft so that it slides forward off the yoke. You're gonna want to get out. Yep. So just rotating the rear drive shaft. So we can take the bolts out. Three. Yep. And, and it, with a ten and a half head, right? Ten. Ten, ten mil, twelve point. He'll rub up a little bit I can see it fast, but it's okay. Rubbing is racing. Just turn it. And then so you can actually loosen it. You just... 
When I did this on my car, I just rotate, rotated the drive shaft by hand. Sucked. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. Especially with the cabbage patch hands. So now that all three bolts are out, the drive shaft will slide forward just a little bit to give you the extra room that you'll need in order to pull the valve out of the top of the rear diff. So I just spin this to give myself some clearance from these things. Yep. So you want the yoke. There's three, three edges. You want this opening because the valve is sitting directly up top. Pull the top right here. And it's just a so I use, six. I yeah. use this little setup. It's a six mil Allen. The concept is as short as you can go, the better. Okay. Shorter the better. You can use whatever you want as long as it's short. So you can actually get in here. And it's kind of a tricky, tricky place to work. Once you've got it. That's just a, what kind of ratchet is that? Just a bit ratchet, a uh, quarter drive. If you can't find one of those, you can also use a um, quarter inch box wrench, a rat with a ratcheting closed end, and just put a bit inside of it. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> so you're saying I shouldn't put my face on the exhaust? <laughs> yeah. But do no. Go ahead. We're not. We're not going to judge you. Well, it looks like you both already did. Well, so. <laughs> we want to. We want to add a triplet to the twins. <laughs> Sometimes the valve gets stuck on a bit. You can't actually pull it out. So I just like to thread the valve back in a little bit. If I can. And then I can pull a bit out. That's why shorter is better. So this is the stock valve, and uh, this is our modified valve. Um, the biggest way to tell the difference is going to be the inside spring, and we've grounded off the top just to make it flush. Um, you can look at our other video to see how to do the, mo the modification yourself if you have the spring. Um, so now you just reinstall the modified one. So are we giving up this okay? Yep.
And tightening just to tight, no, you don't have to do high yeah. torque. Yeah, you don't gotta go too, too crazy. There we go. Then you just bind this back up. So now you're just going opposite, reinstalling everything. Yep, and same thing. To actually tighten, you gotta smack it a bit. Excuse me. Because it will just but that's tight enough. Guy, so it's not flopping around to that bolt hole. Okay. It's gonna be the same bolt hole that the stock Codex controller came out of. And this is just so that, just a precaution so that it won't hit the drive shaft or anything. The high G. Okay. So people are finally going to see why we did the first video. That's so all we did is just clean up the zip ties, um, cut all the tails off. Now we're going to be moving to the inside of the car. The plug will be down here, right here. So we just got to lift the seat up, pull the carpet, pull the insulation. It's a bit of a dig, but it's down there. And just pull all of it up. Get a little bit of pressure on it. Then don't go around like that. It won't reach. Just go like this. Try to get it up in here. The cut that clears that hole right down there. I don't know if you can see that's the, the hole for the seat.
I don't know if you noticed. Jared likes to do pinky out. <laughs> there was some not so silent judgment that just happened right now. You don't you get your pinky smacked in the life. That's actually his nickname, Pinky Snag. <laughs> <laughs> he had shirts made, so. Does that make you the brain, if he's Pinky? It always makes me the brain. Mm. So what we're doing right now is routing the potentiometer, which is going to be able to adjust how much power you're sending to either the front wheels or the rear wheels for the Howdex controller. So there's 10 different positions. One, which is all the way down to the left, will be front wheel drive. And then all the way counterclockwise, or clockwise rather, will be 10, which will send uh, up to 50% of the power to the rear wheels. Straight up and down in the middle is going to be the stock position. this just to, just to clear the clip points but not too much slack here you want to give yourself enough slack to work so let's go Okay, so you probably won't be able to film very well, but we'll just pull this back here. We'll route this cable back over, over the edge of it, up top, and then we'll, we'll take this off. Got some prep points. It'll come up like right by the OBD2 on the right side of the OBD2 plug. It'll come up and come out through here. So it's a bit tricky, but it can be done. So that's how you route, that's how you would do it if you were doing this little kick panel right here for where the airbag used to be. Uh, alternatively, we're going to show you how to route it into the center console as well. Uh, so we're just going to undo this really quick. Oh yeah, I guess we can put it back in park, huh? Huh? We can't put the car back in park yet? We don't have to. Oh, okay. Just stand like that. I'm actually interested to see how, the, how he does the center console. Oh, yeah, it's the same way I did it. I've never done the center console. So. Oh, really? Alright. I've always just. So, for the center console, it's I'll a little bit. Instructions. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So, okay, he did pull the, the back seat. 
finished on the cable end. Cyvex car? No. No. We have Shit. that. Uh, we have that brushless pump over there. The pump controller. Yeah, I know. Can you go get it? No, I can't. The seal came out. Do you know where it is? It it's uh, by the shipping area. It was on the shipping area by the fuel tanks. So I'm just undoing. Do you guys have a plastic trim remover? Uh, to pull this face off? Yeah. Alright, right, we'll pause here. So just popping this fascia off. Yep. And then there's going to be... There's a plug underneath for either the charging ports or... Okay. So just, just connecting the two USB chargers for the rear. Barely coming out of there. That's what I was experiencing as well. Fun, fun. I love getting my hands full of gas for a living. And oil. Mention that one. I prefer to pull it myself. Yeah. So that's just the rear piece that you're just dis disconnecting. Yep. So it's just right here. And it's just like a Dean's clip. So now, what you're gonna do is, I like to line up the potentiometer where it's gonna go. If you can go up to the front so that you can actually see inside. Basically, we're going to go right here for the hole for the potentiometer. Um, do that one more time. What's that? So do it one more time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to go about dead center. Wait, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Definitely going to need to. <laughs> okay. I need to modify that. So for the potentiometer, you're going to go about about right here. Okay. For the hole. And what you're gonna do is this has a set screw through, and there's gonna be a knob that connects to it, and this screw and stuff's gonna hold it in place of this uh, nut. Okay, do that one more time, sorry. What? What? There's a screw? Yeah, there's there's a knob that's gonna go on here with mm -hmm. this nut. You're gonna pull this nut off in the washer, slide it through, slide this stuff back on so it holds it into place on this face. And then you're gonna connect the potentiometer yeah, yeah. knob with a set screw on it. Um, but we're gonna drill out this hole and show you guys that process. Come on, bro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route the potentiometer underneath this center tray up and through here. It's gonna come out this hole. Um, it's a little bit easier if you route it backwards, route the wires through this way, uh, and then connect it at the bottom. But, so, 
you do, just slide your hand up under, pop it up a little bit at a time. Then we'll use another hand. As far as slack, you really don't need much through this portion. Um, about eight to nine inches should be plenty. And then once we get the Dremel, Dremel up the hole, that's how it'll connect. You can wrap some tape around it and then it'll grab it. I think Jared just fell in love. I'm gonna see the I'm gonna see the potentiometer. You can just pull the slack. It's uh quarter inch. Alright. Can you hold that's really awesome. Alright. I'm gonna need you to fish it through. Are you still recording? I'm trying. Yeah. So we're just gonna the hole. There you go. Can't find the hole. It's too small. <laughs> it's gonna make the. <laughs> It's a joke. <laughs> oh, it's right there. Oh. Ah. Ah. It's so close. Trying to film and do this. <laughs> Brain not capable. <laughs> Push to max. Oh, well, I can see it. Straighten it up a little it's bit. It's crowning. All right, you guys get this. All right. Now we're just going to feed it through the back. Now that we have our hole cleared. Our holes are clear. Nope. Am I getting warmer? Nope. No. You almost had it. Oh, it's uh, up. Up a little more. Nope, down. There you go. Oh, back up. There you go. To your left. Yep, right there. Nope, down. This is the worst game ever. <laughs> Can I have my flashlight that you dropped? All right, so what we just, just did is put the nut so you can see that's all the way all the way uh, down I guess you would, could call it so you can focus So that's all the way down, and then that's half, and that's all the way up. So you put it at half. And then we put the thing on. Where is it? The knob? I believe the knob's still in the box. It's on top of the box out there. Oh, okay. Do you have the, yeah, I the Allen? Yeah. Cool. And then uh, the... Um, so I talked to him and we're just going to do the set screw as the reference instead of the 
the line. Oh. So you can just flip it upside down. So you guys are going to do it backwards. Yep. But that way, you know, whenever you're just like driving and you're looking at it, the set screw is the reference. Okay. And you can just like look and see exactly where it's at instead of the line. It's a little bit easier this way. That's a good idea. It's almost like you've done this before. Something like that. Like that. Like that. Cool. Yep, there you go. Alright, that's how you do it.